So let's apply this powerful technique to calculating derivatives to, partial, to solving partial differential equations. And again, we make uh, use of the one-dimensional acoustic wave equation, which you can see here. Like we did before, on the left-hand side, we have the time, second time derivative, and we solve it numerically using a standard three-point uh, second derivative finite difference operator. On the right-hand side, what remains to be done is to calculate the second space derivative. And for that, we do the following. We Fourier transform our vector containing the pressure values, obtaining capital P, the spectrum. We multiply it with this second uh, derivative operator, which is minus k square, in the spectral domain, in the wave number domain. And then we inverse transform what we have obtained back into uh, the space domain and obtain an exact uh, second derivative. And again, how that's working in practice, uh, we resort to our Jupyter notebooks and look at this actually not only in one dimension, also in two dimensions. So let's look how we can implement that in a Python code using our Jupyter notebooks. One dimensional acoustic wave equation as we had before. Actually, as mentioned, all the programming environment, whether it's MATLAB, Python, Maple, or others, usually have libraries for the fast Fourier transform that uh, help you implement these kind of pseudospectral derivative applications. So let's see how this works in our Jupyter notebook. So here we have again the one-dimensional wave equation. The left-hand side, we always use a finite difference approximation. And the right-hand side, what we have to do is we have to replace the second time derivative of p again by an approximation. And here we're going to use um, the Fourier method. For that, we make use, and this is, this is shown here again in the continuous form, the, um, the derivative calculated in the spectral domain. In other words, we multiply, we multiply the, um, the spectrum of the pressure, capital P, by um, i k square. This is a multiplication in the spectral domain corresponding to a, a convolution in the space domain. And this is here written in the continuous statement. Now let's see how this is implemented in a small computer script. And that's the subroutine or the function in Python that actually returns the second derivative. Um, we first initialize the uh, wave number domain. Of course, we have a, a maximum wave number, which is the Nyquist wave number, which is pi by dx, so that's k max. And that basically um, forces us to discretize the spectral domain with nx over two points, which is half um, the number of grid points. This is, we need half the number here because we always have um, basically a, an amplitude spectrum and also we have a space, a phase spectrum, sorry. So um, the k vector is initialized as we see here. This requires a bit of care and actually depends on the actual implementation of the fast Fourier transform and one always has to look carefully at the, um, the uh, programming uh, languages, how, how this is done. So in this case, uh, it's, uh, it's done as we see here. And then actually the calculation of the derivative approximation is very elegant. Here now we tap into the FFT library of NumPy. And so we, uh, have our vector f, which contains, which is a vector containing the uh, the pressure values, and we apply the FFT to that vector, and that will, will return um, ff, which is the fast Fourier transform of that vector. It's actually a complex um, uh, spectrum, and that we multiply with the um, actually i k square, which is written here. So if we replace the two here by another number, like one or two, three, four, we get the nth derivative um, in the spectral domain. And then we have to do an inverse Fourier transform using i f f t applied uh, to f f, which is now the, um, the derivative spectrum 
and it returns df underscore num, which which is the um, the space the exact space derivative at our uh, grid points, and this is what we're going to use to solve our uh, numerical um, um, partial differential equation. So we initialize the source as before. I'm not going to go into details here about the setup. You can uh, look at this in more detail. Now, the nice thing about this uh, notebook is we're actually comparing now our Fourier uh, implementation with uh, two finite classic finite difference approximations. One is the three-point finite difference operator, so the three-point approximation to the second derivative as given here. And as you remember, the substantially more accurate five-point operator that's given here. Um, so let's see what happens if we run our problem. Um, we initialize a source at the left side of our physical domain. And here you see the waves propagating. So at the top, you see a three-point operator, middle red, a five-point operator, and the bottom, the Fourier operator. So everything is uh, left exactly the same. So the space increment, the time increment is exactly the same, but we have these different spatial operators. So you can see that um, the Fourier operator in that case actually performs uh, substantially better than the other finite difference um, uh, approximations. Um, you can see a lot of numerical dispersion, more at the three point with a three point operator, less with a a five-point operator and substantially less even more at the Fourier operator. Now, uh, there's an important message here, or I, I, I really want to make sure that you don't misunderstand these results. It doesn't mean the finite difference um, method is bad, because actually we paid a high price having a much better um, pseudo-spectral solution. We actually needed many more floating point uh, calculations to obtain uh, this result. So there is always a price to pay for accuracy. Now, um, let's look also quickly at, the, at an implementation of this approach in two dimensions. Now let's go to a, another notebook. You can see this here. So um, if we look at the equation, it's exactly the same. But instead of having only a derivative, a second derivative with respect to x, we now also have a derivative uh, with respect to z. And it's basically the same um, kind of uh, uh, function or subroutine that we, that we use. We just have to apply it to uh, different uh, spatial domains. And you can see this here is exactly the same um, uh, function as we used in the one-dimensional case. We initialize a source and again we compare with a, a five-point operator uh, here in two dimensions. Now let's see what happens. We run the algorithm and um, here we actually don't show the entire physical domain. We only show a quarter of the domain uh, on the left-hand side, you see the Fourier implementation. On the right-hand side, you see the finite difference implementation. Uh, the source is uh, always at the, at the, at the lower uh, corner. And what we observe is, again, it seems like uh, with the Fourier method delivers an isotropic wave field, which is what we expect. We expect uh, this is an acoustic uh, wave equation, so it's like clapping in the hands. And so you would expect in all directions the same signal. Now, this is not the case for the finite difference method. We've actually calculated this uh, when we discussed the finite difference approximation. We can see that the result is actually most accurate in a, uh, an orientation 45 degrees with respect to the two grid axes. And in the direction of the grid axis, we see a lot of dispersion. And uh, this is uh, an important message here to conclude this analysis of the two-dimensional Fourier method. The error, because we have an exact interpolation, exact derivative and exact interpolation in space, the error is actually isotropic for the Fourier method. And that has actually important impl implications. Because, for example, in nature, there is actually physical anisotropy. And if you want to study physical anisotropy, you better use a method that does not have an, an anisotropic error in order not to confuse numerical 
anisotropy in physical anisotropy. That's actually the reason why when the pseudospectral method was, um, uh, was uh, invented and used for the first time in seismology, for example, uh, it was actually used immediately to study anisotropic uh, wave propagation. So um, I think this is a very elegant way of, um, of solving the wave equation numerically. Again, the drawback is that we need a lot more grid points. Uh, we need a lot of more floating point operations, I'm sorry, to, uh, to solve our problem. So more computation time. The advantage is that we actually need less grid points per wavelength. So the spatial discreti discretization can be coarser than you would with a standard finite difference approximation if you want to achieve the same accuracy. What does that mean? That means actually you need less memory. And that was actually very important a few decades ago when memory was very, very rapid access memory was very, very expensive. Now computers are much faster um, and actually uh, for reasons of, um, uh, because parallelization is much more difficult or inefficient with these uh, global communication schemes that are required for the pseudospectrum method, that method is actually no, uh, not really in use today to solve uh, fully three-dimensional uh, problems.